Today we are going to take a closer look at the GDX Plus 3. This is a fully enclosed 3D printer with a print speed of 600 mm per second and an acceleration of 20,000 mm per second. This is faster than the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And the X Plus 3 can print ABS, ASA, PLA and even nylon. And it does all of that while costing less than $900. But is it actually any good? Well, we are going to find out. My name is Valentin and this is Craft Nights 3D. This printer was sent to me by GD for free for this review. Let's start at the beginning with the packaging and the setup of the X Plus 3. The printer is very well packaged. The printer comes pre-assembled and is packaged with lots of styrofoam to ensure that nothing gets damaged during transit. The heated bed and the print head are both secured by screws or zip ties to keep them from taking any damage. All in all, it took me about 20 minutes to get the printer set up and ready for the first print. The X Plus 3 comes with an illustrated manual that will show you exactly what you have to do before you start your first print. Also, this printer is covered in stickers that show you what you have to do before you start the first print and what you shouldn't do when you print with different materials. For example, there's a sticker on the top cover of the printer that will tell you to leave this cover off when you are printing with PLA or GPU. There are also stickers on the back side of the printer that will show you exactly how to install the filament spool. And there are a ton of stickers that will tell you what screws to remove and what packaging material to take out of the printer before you start your first print. This feels like GD had a lot of negative experiences in the past where people apparently broke the machine because they did not read the manual before. And now they cover the machine in stickers to make sure that people see what they have to do before starting the first print. But all in all, I actually think this is a good thing, because one of the things, for example, you have to do before starting the first print is cleaning the carbon rods. You have to clean the carbon rods with isopropyl alcohol to keep them from scratching, and I would have not known this if it weren't for the sticker. By the way, the GDX Plus 3 comes with 500 grams of ABS GF25 filament. This is ABS filament with glass fiber. It also comes with some silica gel desiccant for the drying box, with a USB stick, a 1.5 meter LAN cable, a PDFE tube for the drying box, an illustrated manual, special paper for the build plate leveling, a scraper, a needle for unclogging the nozzle, a glue stick, a replacement hot end with a hardened steel nozzle and some screws and tools for assembly. Before we can start the first print however, we first have to level and calibrate the printer. The X Plus 3 runs on clippers, so the input shaper calibration is done automatically before the first print, but you have to level the bed manually. Or to be more precise, you have to set the Z offset manually. Leveling is done automatically as well. For setting the Z offset, you have to use this paper that is delivered with the X Plus 3. It is slightly thicker than normal paper, so you definitely have to keep this or you are going to have a bit of an issue leveling this printer in the future. Once you are done with the setup, it's finally time to start the first print. The X Plus 3 comes with its own slicer, which is called the GD Slicer, and I don't really like the software as much. It has a lot of very useful presets, but the software unfortunately is very, very, very slow on my PC. So it was really a pain to use it during this whole review. So I would highly recommend transferring the presets to the slicer of your choice, for example Cura or maybe even Prusa Slicer. I did some test prints in PLA and as you can see this printer is calibrated quite well out of the box. As you can see the print quality on this machine is quite good. There is almost no stringing, the bridging was also no issue for this machine and it was able to print overhangs all the way up to 80 degrees. I also printed a calibration cube and as you can see the accuracy on this printer is close to perfect. But one of the main selling points of this printer is that it is able to print almost any filament. So let's put that to the test. I started with printing ABS, although before I started the first ABS print, I applied some 3D glue to the build surface to make sure that the ABS adheres properly to the build surface. 
I mainly printed these gravity holders and as you can see they turned out perfectly and they work like a charm. Next I printed with this ABS. This is ABS with glass fibers. This is also the spool that was delivered with the X plus 3. But before I started the first print with this ABS I had to change the nozzle. There is a prominent sticker on the print head of the X plus 3 that tells you that if you are printing with abrasive materials you have to change the brass nozzle in the print head with the steel nozzle that is also delivered with the printer. And this is where I made a small mistake. I thought you had to change this whole assembly right here in order to change the nozzle. But as it turns out I could have also just changed the nozzle itself. All I had to do is remove the nozzle from this assembly and attach it to the assembly that was already installed on the printer. And as a little side note, as you can see right here, the hot end is a ceramic hot end, meaning it will heat up very quickly. Once I changed to the hardened steel nozzle, it was finally time to print the ABS with glass fiber. I mainly printed these foldable hooks with the ABS and as you can see they turned out great. I had very little issues, only a few bad adhesion issues that were quickly fixed by reapplying some of the 3D glue to the build surface. I then went ahead and designed this model for my rain gutter to test the accuracy of this printer. Because the finished print is going to be sitting outside in the sun and in the rain, I decided to print this model in ASA. This model also printed perfectly, it fit perfectly on the rain gutter and as you can see it also works. Overall this printer handled every single filament I threw at it perfectly and I had no bad adhesion issues or any quality issues at all. So let's take a look at the print speed next. GD promises that the X plus 3 can print with a speed of up to 600 mm per second and an acceleration of 20,000 mm per second squared, which is actually faster than the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the Bamboo Lab P1P. GD promises on their homepage that the X plus 3 can print a Benchy in 16 minutes flat, which is quite impressive. So let's test if that is actually true. I first sliced a Benchy with the standard settings in GD Slicer and this Benchy was able to print in 22 minutes and the quality of the print was pretty much perfect. And after tweaking some settings I was actually able to print a Benchy in 16 minutes flat and it looked really good. As you can see all of the overhangs printed perfectly, there is almost no stringing and all of the details also printed great. So a 60 minute Benchy, it's impressive. Next let's take a look at something less impressive, the software. While Clipper works perfectly fine on this machine, the LCD screen and the GD slicer are a whole other thing. As I mentioned before, the GD slicer is very 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 slow on my PC. Every single action takes at least 2-3 to three seconds before it's finished, which makes it a real pain to work with, unfortunately, because all of the presets are actually pretty useful for this machine. Which is really weird, because it is based on Cura, and all the other slices I have installed on my PC that are also based on Cura, including Cura itself, were perfectly fine for me. So I don't know what went wrong here, but it is definitely something they should fix pretty quickly. Just like the navigation with the LCD screen. While the LCD screen itself is pretty responsive and works great, the menu is a bit annoying to use. For example, if you want to start a 3D print, you first have to select the file, which is perfectly fine, but then you have to wait until the preview image is loaded completely. While the image is loading, you cannot press anything in this menu. You can't press back, you can't press stop, you can't press play, you can't press anything. You have to wait until the image is loaded fully and only then the SED screen becomes responsive again. Which is really annoying because some of the bigger prints actually take a long time until the whole image is loaded. And also the last issue I ran into, which is by the way pretty hilarious, when I wanted to enter my Wi-Fi password, I had the following issue. My Wi-Fi password contains the AND sign. Can you see an AND sign anywhere here? 
Yeah, that's right. There's no end sign. I can't enter my Wi-Fi password. So I contacted the GD support and to their credit, they actually responded really, really quickly. But the response they sent me was not what I was hoping for. Basically, they told me that um, there is indeed no end sign and there are a bunch of other special characters missing here. And the only way to connect the printer to my Wi-Fi password is either to change my Wi-Fi password or to SSH into the printer and then set the password in there manually. Now, I was able to do this, but I see a lot of other users who are not as experienced with, for example, Linux, who would struggle with this. Overall, it would seem like the software is really the weakest part of this printer. Before we get to our final verdict, let's have a look at the power consumption and let's see how noisy the X plus 3 is. As with many printers that are running on Clipper, the X plus 3 is quite power hungry. When the printer is idle, it will consume around 18 watts and when the printer is printing, it will consume around 480 to 500 watts, depending on how fast it prints and especially depending on what kind of filament it prints. While the printer is idle, it is almost silent, but when it is printing, it will be between 47 and 50 decibels loud. Compared to the P1P, which is about 60 decibels loud while printing, this is quite good, especially because the X plus 3 has similar speeds and it can at times even be faster than the P1P. Overall, I can recommend this printer to anyone who is searching for a budget X1 carbon alternative. This printer can print anything from ASA to ABS to even nylon. The only things it doesn't have is spaghetti detection, first layer detection, and it obviously doesn't come with an AMS or something similar, so you won't be able to print multiple materials on this machine. But as a trade-off, it also costs much, much less than an X1 Carbon, while printing at similar speeds and being able to print all of the materials that the X1 Carbon can. But what do you think about this printer? Is it really a X1 Carbon alternative or not? Let me know in the comments below.